I'm so honored to be here tonight to introduce my friend, Paul Foster. What Paul has accomplished in business uh, is nothing short of amazing, building Western Refining uh, from basically a, a, a company that was, that was out of business into a multi-billion dollar industry, a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, it's, uh, and really, really from scratch, Paul is an amazing businessman and so deserving of this honor. Not only is he an amazing businessman, but Paul's heart uh, is, is so uh, attuned to giving uh, to, to institutions and people in need. What he's done with the medical center in El Paso, to Texas Tech, to the University of Texas System, to his alma mater at Baylor, he is such a generous, giving person. I first met him when we both served, to get, served together on the Board of Regents in Austin. And, Paul was always one of those that was uh, listened intently, uh, but when he spoke, uh, he was on point. Uh, he was always adding value. He's recently become chairman of the Uni University of Texas System Board of Regents, a job that is incredibly important and that Paul will uh, just take the rein reins of and perform. I I'm just looking for great things uh, at the University of Texas under his leadership. We are so thankful, Texans should be so thankful for Paul Foster. And Paul, I want to welcome you tonight to the um, Texas Business Hall of Fame, an award so well deserved. Thank you. Foster began looking for opportunities when he was just a child. Well, I mean, I liked all, you know, sports and just activities. I was also real big into trying to figure out how to make money from the time I was very small. And when I was old enough, I was working in the oil fields, you know, digging ditches and painting tanks and laying pipelines and all that kind of stuff. He really wanted to be a doctor, but a couple of pre-med classes at Baylor University caused him to question his career goals. So after my freshman year, I sat down really and talked to my dad about, you know, what else can I do? You know, what, what makes sense? And after that, decided to go into business and, and ended up majoring in accounting. After school, he worked as an internal auditor for Southern Union Gas Company. That was the beginning of a career that eventually led him to El Paso Refinery in El Paso, Texas, where he saw a significant opportunity. Well, what happened, they went bankrupt and I was, I was working there at the refinery at the time and the banks foreclosed on the refinery and took possession of it, which is pretty unusual. And so now you have these banks that own this big asset and don't quite know what to do with it. He went to work for a consulting firm out of Dallas that managed the refinery's assets. It didn't take long and Foster discovered an opportunity. And they hired us to manage this asset for them. And I did that for a few years and then I broke away and formed my own company in 97, which was uh, what, which is what I called Western Refining. Paul developed a plan to purchase the El Paso refinery and led a small team of investors to accomplish just that. Jeff Stevens was one of Western's founding partners. It was one of those things that a, a lot of people just kind of said, okay, Paul, that sounds good, but uh, you're really not gonna pull it off. In the meantime, another refinery sat across the street from El Paso Refinery, and it became part of the overall longer range purchase plan. They both wanted to sell, uh, but they wanted to sell to somebody that had deep pockets, or at least some pockets. I had nothing. Um, and so the challenge was financial. I was confident that it would work, but I wasn't confident that we could get the money. I, I felt that uh, it was a long shot. Once you know, we crossed all the hurdles and uh, he assembled the team, uh, you, just, you could see it all coming together. And from the day that uh, we took over the operations of the refinery, uh, things went well because it was a well thought out, well planned, well executed. And, and Paul's leadership and his ability to bring people together and uh, mix different personalities was just, he did just a fantastic job. Today, Western Refining is the fourth largest publicly traded independent refiner and marketer in the nation. I think most people will would tell you that they're proud of the company, proud of what we represent uh, in the communities that we're involved in. And, uh, you know, we, we try not to act too much like a big company, even though we're getting a little bigger. Then uh, we try to remember where we've come from. His commitment to the El Paso community can be seen all over the city. 
On the east side of town, stores inside the 55-acre Fountains at Ferris Shopping Center will open this year. Historic buildings in the downtown district are being revitalized. And in the spring, the first game will be played by the El Paso Chihuahuas, a AAA baseball team purchased by Mr. and Mrs. Foster and the Hunt family of El Paso. So Paul uh, is beloved by El Paso for a business leader who is given back to his community, revitalizing downtown El Paso, his impact on the University of Texas at El Paso, his commitment to the better health of the citizens of El Paso and Texas, and not only his you know, intellectual commitment and his commitment from, from his business experience, but his philanthropic commitment of giving a transformational gift to the School of Medicine in El Paso that is now named the Paul Foster School of Medicine. And in addition to that, uh, he has given back to his alma mater at Baylor University, uh, where he graduated. He served a six-year term on the UT System's Board of Regents and proudly accepted the appointment by Governor Perry to serve as chairman. Texas is full of opportunities, waiting for a man like Paul Foster to come along and make them work. When you have this kind of success that he's had with Western, um, it comes with a lot of rewards. And one thing about Paul that I've watched is um, the financial part really hasn't changed him. He's the same person that I knew 30 years ago. And he is the real deal.